Hi, I'm Mike Fauché. I'd like to spend a few minutes to discuss this brand new NAS unit. It's a QNAP TBS 951X, nine bays. It has five three and a half inch bays and four two and a half inch bays primarily used for SSDs. Um, I want to walk through the, the uh, hardware, the configuration and the setup and give you an overview of the product. So I hope you enjoy the video and thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe. Hello everybody and I'd like to cover a brand new NAS unit that I just bought. It's the QNAP TBS 951X. As you can see it's a 9 bay unit. It has 5 3.5 inch drives and 4 2.5 inch drives for use with SSDs. And that would be either for caching or Q tier or you can create your own separate array that's 100% SSDs. There's a copy button in the front which actually includes a one button push um, to dumps everything from the USB stick onto a predefined folder on the unit. So let's take a look at the back and see what's back there. As you can see there's a nice 140 millimeter fan. Um, keeps it nice and cool and very very quiet. I'm very impressed with the noise levels. There's additional USBs on the bottom, power supply, and there are uh, two LAN ports. And one of them is um, actually a 10 gig port, which is the top one. This 10 gigabit port allow me to put it into my uh, QNAP switch. I have a 10 gig QNAP switch, so we'll test out and see how that performance goes. I also bought a um, 8 gig memory kit for it because um, it only came with 2 gigs and that's really too too low. Um, I also have three SSDs, uh, some old Samsungs I had laying around that I'm going to use and try to set up as a cache. And um, and then I have um, three 6 terabyte drives from Western Digital, the red drives, um, which I use exclusively. Um, they're at a really nice price point compared to the 8 terabytes or the 10 terabytes. So I really wanted to get something larger, but it was just a little too costly. Uh, we'll show you how to put the uh, drives in. It's kind of pretty simple, pretty straightforward. There's a locking clip and you can um, actually unlock the mechanism and actually just slide the drawer out. So you can just pull either the two and a half inch bay out and put a drive in and let's put one of the SSDs in so you can kind of see how it fits. It really literally just snaps in there and ready to go. Just lock it down and you're, you're ready to go. So once you get the uh, three and a half inch drives out, we can put one of the uh, Western Digital Reds in there uh, and you can see kind of how the toolless design works. Um, it's pretty straightforward. These trays have kind of a clip on the side. It's kind of like a little pressure bracket that you just basically slide, pull off and uh, that's what really locks the drive in so you can just pull them off with your with your finger and they just kind of come right off and you do have one on each side so you take them both off and you put the drive in and once the drives in and you can now put the clips back in just line up the holes and literally just push it back in and that locks the drive in place. You can do that on both sides. And then you slide the drive back in. Pretty simple. Um, just insert it back in and lock the clip back in. Um, same thing across the rest of the drives and now we'll be ready to actually configure the unit. So let's see how that works out. Okay, I went ahead and loaded up all the drives and I'm ready to now configure the unit. I've also added the additional memory so 
Um, it, everything should show up properly when we go through the setup. So the very first screen you're prompted to, now there is a couple different ways to set these up. One is to just find your IP address that, from your D DHCP server and type it in, which is what I did. Um, or you can use their quick setup, which uh, basically you enter in a QID code and it will find it on your network and install it. So I opted to go this way because I'm a control freak and I want to know where everything is coming from. So this is the very first entrance screen. So let's walk through the installation. Okay, the first thing it asked me is to give it a name. So I'm just going to call it... Um, I'm just going to be creative right now and call it... Um, we we'll call it a TVS 951. And I'm going to go ahead and put a password in. I'm going to verify the password. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and hit next. Okay, and this is where we're going to set the time zone. So I'm going to go ahead and pick um, in Los Angeles. I'll pick Pacific time. And I will hit next. I'm going to go ahead and leave the IP address for now because this is on a test environment. So I'm going to go ahead and change it all in a little bit. Um, so I'll leave this as is for now. I'm going to hit next. And this is the options I can actually enable. So by default, the uh, Windows is on because that's what I'm installing from. So we'll leave that alone. And I'm going to go ahead and hit Next. And then here it says um, the storage pool allows me to configure RAID groups. Um, and if I want to use Q-Tier, um, I can go ahead and configure disks later. So I'm going to go ahead and configure disks now. Okay, so now it's given me uh, lists all the drives and I did put in one SSD uh, during the install. I probably should have taken it out or put the others in. I will configure those later. Right now all I really want to do is configure the physical hard drives. And what I'm going to do is, is basically configure it as a thick volume, meaning I'm going to have one large volume um, for the entire, uh, all three drives, which will obviously be expandable, um, but it also allows me to create multiple volumes within that array, which is what I'm going to want to do. So I'm going to go ahead and leave that the way checked off the way it is. And this is basically telling me right now it's going to configure as a RAID 5. Um, estimated space of the storage pool will be 10.89 terabytes. And this is with the three drives because in an RAID 5 array you do lose one drive for storage. So um, here it's going to allow me to basically set up uh, uh, byte size and it also allows me to, to basically, should I choose, to encrypt this volume. And again, you can do this afterwards as well. So I'm going to create right now a... Um, which is the terabyte, so I'm going to make it a two terabyte um, initial volume. I'm not going to encrypt volume one right now. I will probably encrypt some of the other volumes I create. And that should be it right now. I'm going to hit next. And I'm not going to enable these features right now. I'm just going to go ahead and say no and hit next. So this is the kind of this total configuration that you're seeing right now. It's showing me the device name. It's showing me the um, user or the admin user. It's giving me the time zone. Um, it's telling me it's, I'm going to obtain an IP automatically, which is what I want, because when I move it to my final network, um, I'm going to want to do that. Um, I can always give it a static IP later on. And this is the details about the volume. So I'm going to go ahead and apply and um, asking me to confirm. So I will confirm and that's all there is to it. 
it now is doing its thing. It's going to go ahead and uh, walk through, and when it's done, it's basically ready to use. It's not going to change, take too long since this is these are all fresh drives. It's not going to take a whole lot of time. It does take a while to expand the drive when you do add additional drives, but for this purpose, it should be fine. Um, anyway, that's um, basically the entire setup from start to finish.